there guys, this is Jess from Stellar Tarot and today I am here to complete my final video in the History and Traditions of series that I've been doing over the last year. Every six weeks or so, when a new Sabbath comes up, I have been posting a video that I talks in detail about the history and the traditions of some of those sabbats, where they come from, where they get their names from, all of that kind of stuff. I research these videos quite thoroughly. Um, I will provide further reading in the comments below. I have like five pages of notes here. So yeah, let's, let's get right into it. So we start with looking at the origins of a tradition and then we kind of build up to modern day with modern day ritual ideas kind of presented at the end. So Lunasa, this is a Celtic harvest festival that was celebrated pr pretty much widely amongst all the uh, countries that are now considered part of the UK. Um, it's pretty likely that it was also celebrated by the Gaulish Celts that were on the other side of um, the English Channel and uh, that some of the traditions then were adapted for Christian ceremonies, which we'll discuss in a little bit. Um, so Lunasa is mentioned in some of the earliest recorded Irish literature. Keeping in mind, Irish literature was not written down until the 1100s approximately. So um, it was a few hundred years removed from when um, Irish people were actively pagan to when Irish people had been converted to Christianity. So the monks recorded some of the original myths, true Druidism and uh, Celtic mythology was passed down orally, not by a written um, tradition. So it was uh, widely celebrated pretty much on the same day that we do now, the 1st of August, or there in and about. Uh, ancient people would have been tracking the sun's progress, of course, so they would have celebrated Lunasa around the time that it was halfway between the summer solstice and then the autumnal equinox. So obviously, pretty much everybody knows that the uh, name Lunasa comes from the god Lu, who is an Irish Celtic god. And it celebrated the start of the harvest season. Uh, now would be the time when certain grain crops and cereal crops would be ready to be harvested. Obviously, things like vegetables and berries and some fruits are ready to be harvested around this time. And generally, these celebrations would take place as large groups. There would be feasting, there might be sacrifice, there were feats of athletic competition, and sacred sites like wells and special hills may have been visited. Maybe offerings of food would be left, often either in honor of the god Lu, um, or deities associated with him, or they would actually be left there uh, sort of as a... Um, a prayer like an offering to to get good harvest so um lu is uh the first part of lunasa the nasa part in gaelic irish gaelic meant an assembly so basically it was an assembly to commemorate and celebrate the god lu it was all about this guy um, it's also the modern name for August in Irish Gaelic, although the spelling is quite different. Um, another name for Lunasa is Lamas, which is an Anglo-Saxon Saxon word, and it breaks down into Loaf Mass Day. It was celebrated on the same day and probably got its or origins from Lunasa. And Christians would take... Um, flour that they had uh, made from the first cereal grain harvest of the year, so the first wheat crop. They would grind it down into flour and then bake a loaf of bread and um, bring it to church as an offering. Um, there is some possibility that this tradition started as a Lunasa tradition of um, like honoring the first crop that came, making something of it, and then 
breaking it up into pieces and placing it in certain areas to bring like good luck or good fortune or even as a protective measure. It's unsure whether it was kind of like an amulet or good luck charm or whether it was for protective means. Um, but Loafmas Day would um, be celebrated on that day and it was also the feast day of a certain saint. So over time, uh, Lamas changed to um, a bit of a different uh, celebration, although there are some aspects of Christian Lamas that do get practiced in certain areas and churches in various parts of the world. So where do we get the origin of the celebration of Lunasa? Well, according to the Irish Celts, Lunasa began as a funerary feast to commemorate Lou's foster mother, uh, tell to you, sorry, hair in my mouth, and I'm butchering the Gaelic. Tell to, um, she was a member of the Firbolg race, which was also um, a race within mythology that was uh, defeated and then eventually came to work together in harmony with the uh, Tuatha de Danon, and that is told in the myth of Baylor or something like that. I have to remind myself. Anyways, uh, Tail 2 was for bulk. She adopted Lou as her foster son, and she actually ended up giving her life because she died clearing the plains of Ireland so that the people would have places to plant their crops, grow their food so that they could thrive and survive. It's thought that maybe um, she may have also been considered a sort of earth goddess, sort of like Demeter Persephone combined, dying at uh, Lamas as a um, signifier that she was, you know, making the sacrifice for herself and then reborn again in the spring. But it's not 100% clear. Again, Irish mythology was not written down for hundreds of years until like after they were converted. Um, so they started, so Lunasa started as a funerary feast to um, honor Tail 2. And eventually these evolved into athletic games and competitions called the Teltian Games. I'm sorry. Links will be down below so you can see spellings for yourself. Um, these athletic games could include any number of different activities and exercises and all of that kind of stuff. And there may also have just been um, even like showmanship of certain skills that some people had. And it's also thought that this was a time when you know, large groups were getting together for the Teltlian Games that uh, they may have been sort of like modern Olympic Games, that it was seen as a time of um, armistice. There'd be no warring, there'd be no uh, fighting between different tribes or people who have issues to settle. This was to come together as a people and um, honor the Harvest Festival together and not uh, separate. Because these were large groups as well, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that this was a really market heavy time as well. You literally had large groups of people like maybe villages or settlements coming together to celebrate probably within their own what we now consider the modern Irish provinces. And uh, so yeah, it would be a good time to catch up with people who you hadn't seen since possibly even last Lunasa. It was a good time to get some trading done. And there was also a traditional time of pledging yourself to somebody in a trial marriage. Now what a trial marriage was is what we kind of consider sort of a common law type of situation today. Move in with somebody, try out your marriage for a year and see how it goes. 
if at the end of the year you come to it and you're like, nope, this isn't gonna work, the marriage could actually be dissolved without any consequences. So we are talking about pre-Christian times here as well, because obviously once the Christians took over, trial marriages came to an end, at least the legal ones. Um, and yeah, they're just basically, they were, you know, it was a festival, it was feasting, you'd have various different activities going on. And you can probably imagine how much of a hub of activity it would be for some of these ancient peoples. Um, versions of Lunasa were celebrated maybe slightly differently within like uh, Britain and Wales and Scotland, the Isle of Man, but they pretty much all resemble and have similar names or names that are basically translated to the same types of meanings for Lunasa in their own respective languages like Welsh, Anglo-Saxon, and Scottish Gaelic. Um, there was also a quite possibly solemn ritual going on during this as well. It wouldn't all have been celebration and drinking and feasting and all of that good stuff. The fact is they were coming together to celebrate that it was the beginning of the harvest season. And so some solemn ritual would be done where they would do a ritual cutting of some of the first grains, likely corn and wheat. Also barley would possibly be in there. Um, and they would sometimes use uh, some of these first cut grains as items for protection to sprinkle around to different areas of the settlements, protect the future crops from, uh, you know, withering and dying or spoiling over the winter. And it was also customary, specifically in Ireland, not sure about the other uh, UK countries at the time, it was usually custom for a bull to be sacrificed. And then he would, after that was sacrificed, obviously all of it would be utilized by the people. We need to remember this, that a, an animal sacrifice would not be like they just left it to die and rot out in the field. A sacrifice would be made and it would be the giving of life. That would be what the god or the goddess would receive the people could use the items that you know they can collect from sacrificing an animal like the meat the different uh, fluids in there the bones the hide everything was put to use there is some evidence to suggest that some of the that the hide from this sacrificial bowl was maybe used in some sort of really um important uh like object made into it after perhaps like a, a drum for the local druids or other things like that um, but we're not a hundred percent sure again because the Celts wrote nothing down um, that bull would then be replaced with a young bull he would be brought in to represent um, that while the cutting down of this year's harvest was going to begin it was also the start of um, like really gathering in your food and being able to gather in life essentially because being able to feed yourselves throughout long winters when you couldn't just go to the grocery store and pick up what you needed for dinner that night having enough food to last you through the winter was a really important thing to them. So the young bull would be brought in and it would be cared for throughout the next year to be the next year's sacrificial bull. A lot of Lunasa traditions have actually survived into modern day practices. There is a, um, a practice practiced in Ireland called Reek Sunday, which is essentially a little bit of a um, stripped of its pagan origin or like stripped of its pagan iconography version of celebrating uh, the the champion championing of Lou over forces of uh, death and destruction. People would climb to certain hills. This is often where they would place offerings of bread or other types of food that we talked about in the like uh, making pilgrimage to sacred sites and wells part. And modern day Reek Sunday sees people um, bringing bread up um, 
the uh, Croag Patrick Hill and leaving an offering there. Sometimes it's bread, sometimes just the, the act of making pilgrimage to these sacred sites is seen as enough. And um, it would basically be to represent the triumphing of, you know, the, the fact that all this hard work has happened and now you get to literally reap what you have sown. So how do we practice Lunasa in modern times as neo-pagans and witches? Celtic reconstructionists are going to keep things really, really historical. Um, but most people are not reconstructionists and most people are not trying to follow ancient traditions exactly. Modern witches and pagans can practice Lunasa and, and celebrate this Sabbath in a number of ways. Uh, you could make a solemn harvesting of some of your vegetables and herbs that you may have been growing in your yard or even on your balcony throughout the year. And then putting some of those together to leave as an offering for the Fae, for your deity of choice. You can also make a pilgrimage to a sacred site to you. This could be a place in nature that you really resonate with, a well, a river, a set of natural caves, a particular forest that you're called to, a desert you live nearby and really love, anywhere. Whatever is sacred to you, you can journey to this place in the flesh and you can, you know, just enjoy being out in nature. There are other ways to celebrate Lunasa as well, like baking bread and doing some of those, you know, really more basic things that we have come to not really do ourselves these days. You could actually go and get the flour and make a loaf of bread by hand or use your bread maker or maybe do 50-50. Often when I do a braided loaf of like ritual bread, I will start the dough in my bread maker and then once it beeps um, after the first rise, I'll punch it down, pull it out, knead it, I uh, shape it into the braided loaf and then leave it for the second rise before then uh, popping it into the oven and baking it. So, you know, you could maybe decide to, to have this as a practice that you do all by hand yourself so that it really is an act of sacred giving and energy being put into this. Um, uh, or you could bake one or just buy a really nicely made artisan loaf of bread from your local store if you really are not inclined to bake. <laughs> um, it's also a good time to start thinking about some of your own blessings and some of the things that are kind of coming to fruition within your life. What are some of the goals that you have set at the beginning of the year that are starting to you know either make progress on or are nearing if not already at completion make a little offering to your spirits of choice as a thank you for either the progress or the completion of these goals and projects and celebrate how far you have come emotionally and spiritually this year as well um obviously Lunasa is a time to honor the god Lu, and so you can do that if you want by any number of things. If you cannot participate in, you know, athletic competitions in your area because of COVID, maybe um, challenge yourself to do something athletic that you don't normally do for a few days straight stretching over, a, you know, like maybe a week or two of the Lunasa period. and you know, really challenging yourself to maybe get in slightly better physical shape, or maybe you challenge yourself to cut out processed foods and try to eat more whole foods, to really celebrate the harvesting of all of these different fruits, vegetables, and grains that are coming into our life. Um, barley was also a really important grain that would be harvested around the time of Lunasa. So this would have been a traditional time to um, start brewing certain beers or whiskeys in order to have enough to last through the winter. You have to remember that this is during a time when it could not always be trusted that you could drink the water. So making beer was actually a really vital part of your everyday farm settlement and farmstead 
that was primarily what you drank um, and it wasn't usually water and that's just because by the time you have finished the brewing process you have killed off whatever bacteria were in that water that could have made you sick and the beer that they would have brewed would have been very low uh, alcohol con uh, content. It was not left to ferment for very long and the yeasts that they use are not the modern brewer's yeast now. You'd actually have to harvest the yeast from out in the wild. So yeah, it's it was quite the process for getting um, the beer together. So with that fresh batch of barley coming in and wheat coming in for certain types of beers, uh, it would be tradition to start another batch in the brewery and to get it going to last through to the winter and the spring and all that good stuff. Um, as an ode to that, I am drinking my husband's home brew today during this video. This is an imperial stout, so not exactly an Irish stout, but it's it's what I have, okay? Mmm, so good. I love me a dark beer. Um, it's definitely, like Lunasa, I think, in a lot of ways, resembles past versions uh, of the like it resembles the the festivals that it originated from hundreds and thousands of years ago the things that we do now are often similar in a lot of ways to the things that we did then and i think that it's really really cool to see that because there is this thread of commonality that has really remained true to this festival. The fact that it has Lu in the name really continues to keep this God's name alive and keep him in the minds of pagans of today. And I think it's a really important thing to kind of honor where we were as um, a, a race, a human race, and where we are now, how far we've come, how things have changed, but really how things have stayed the same. The things that are still key to our lived experience of being a human being. I really invite you this Lunasa, particularly since so many of us are still in quarantine and cannot get together in large groups. Find ways to celebrate Lunasa that will help you connect to the thread of your humanity, will remind you of where we have come from, will honor our ancestors and the hard work that they have done, and will also, you know, continue to strengthen us as a community, as a group of individuals going forward. Uh, this year I am going to bake a loaf of bread. I'm going to do the first rise in my bread maker and then do the rest by hand. And I am also going to purchase some local corn. I wanted to go to a cornfield to harvest some myself, but you pick is not being done right now because of COVID. So um, I am going to get some corn and that will be uh, eaten at our Lunasa meal this weekend and we are going to uh, celebrate the beginning of the harvest by also caring for the garden out back and harvesting what we can from them. We've already been able to get some fresh broccoli out of there. Uh, sugar snap peas are coming off the vines now. Um, we've had our first cucumber. Carrots are still growing quite well. We've had tons of spinach and lettuce, and it looks like the tomatoes will be ripe fairly soon. The potatoes are in blossom now, and it will take a little while before they um, are ready to be harvested, but they will um, somewhat soon. I've also got uh, onions that are hopefully going to be ready to harvest soon as well. So we are keeping a close eye on the garden and continuing to pick what we can and put it into our diets. You know, we really encourage the kids, are you hungry? Okay, let's go see what's ripe in the garden. And often, especially Emily will come out with me and pop five or six of the sugar snap peas into her mouth and kind of walk around with them and crunch on them. She'll eat spinach leaves right off the, the plant. It's great. Um, and yeah, it is just a really great time to be a witch right now because there's so much abundance 
all around us and you can really see the evidence of um, you know the earth's abundance all around you right now so I do hope that all of you have a really wonderful and blessed Lunasa I know that this year is not quite the same however I do think it's really important to remember that this too shall pass and I in particular am going to be raising a glass and lighting a candle in memory of all of the people around the world who cannot be with us this August 1st to celebrate Lunasa because they have succumbed to this virus. And I'll kind of be putting my hopes in there that um, the States is really gonna get things under control because it's just, it's friggin' crazy. And um, I know so many of you who watch are from the States and I know that it's really a worrying time to be alive because so much is shut down and so many people are fighting against security protocols and making it difficult to, uh, you know, for people to feel safe when they are out in public. So um, I really send my love and my blessings your way and I hope that you guys will stay strong and stay safe. Please wash your hands frequently and please wear a mask when you are out in public if you can and you really you really should you really should it will really help to keep the spread of the virus down thank you so much everybody for watching today and until next time be wise be brave and be magical bye